Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Umineko. Last time, the contents of Maria's letter were revealed, and the plot officially started. With Beatrice making her challenge to the Ashirmia household to solve the epitaph, or lose everything. And now, Kyrie! <laughs> That's a good way to think of it. <laughs> Early on, I like to imagine uh, Beatrice as looking like Marissa from Toho. That would have been awesome. Unfortunately not. Oh! This is actually referenced several times along the story, by the way. The North Wind and the Sun. The idea being, this is an old one of Aesop's fables, um, that the North Wind and the Sun make a bet with each other on who can make a traveler discard his cloak. And the wind tries to blow the cloak off, but the traveler just clings tighter. But it's the sun who wins by just shining down on the traveler constantly and making him eventually discard the cloak on his own. The point of the story is that sometimes longer, more drawn-out, and gentle methods are better than strong force ones. Oh, this music. Yeah, 18. The four siblings? Three spouses? Four cousins? Kinzo? That's 12 already. And the servants? Along with Nanjo? Add up collectively to... Another six. So yes, that's 18 people. The nineteenth person would, of course, be Beatrice. Aha! The Devil's Proof! Another thing that uh, is a reference a bit. However, there's something else I want to talk about uh, this time, so I will leave an actual explanation of the Devil's Proof for later, and possibly for the characters themselves. Actually, in fact, I was explaining it just now. It's easy to prove that something exists, but extremely hard to prove that something doesn't exist. Yes, this. Kyrie's own little way of thinking. Turning the chessboard over. Or as I like to say, flipping the chessboard.
You're forgetting the idea that Beatrice may be a huge drama queen. Not everything people do makes sense, is the thing. That's why chessboard thinking is occasionally flawed. We need to go deeper. Wong. I'm sorry, I made another Inception joke. No, this is my first one. <laughs> because I don't make that many Inception jokes. I mentioned that the chessboard thinking was not entirely logical. However, I'm not going to dismiss this argument just because of that. That's what's known as the fallacy fallacy. Refusing any credence for something at all just because it happens to be a logical fallacy. Yes, it's a thing. Look it up. This is where the game is starting to get into a long discussion on logic. It'll keep going throughout the entire, uh, storyline. I like logic a lot, so... I'm having a lot of fun. Hopefully you are too! Everybody think Maria is stupid. Seriously, what's up with that? Now, yeah, the women would become primary suspects, but I'm actually going to give credence to Battler's theory from earlier and say, it is quite possible it could have been a man dressing up as Beatrice. Especially if they were pretending they had been somehow possessed by the witch. Or hell, maybe they had been possessed by the witch. I don't know the genre yet. The genre thing is all that, uh, Basically, the story can be mystery. It's quite possible. But it could also be fantasy. It all depends on whether you accept the existence of witches. Don't, don't, don't worry, Maria. I believe you. Maria, witches exist. Witches exist, Maria. Oh, she can't hear me. Of course she can't hear me, she's in a game, what am I thinking? I get too attached to these characters. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Rudolph, why? I... I have no experience with that. Could someone inform me? How long exactly does it take? Mikey, do you know this?
talk as a family. What? <laughs> Dramatic thunder. That's actually my time, so I'll see you next time. I wonder what Rudolph has to, to talk to you about. Bleh. Words not working. Anyway, see you next time.